AstraZeneca and Oxford University will likely conduct an additional trial for its COVID-19 vaccine candidate, acknowledging a mistake in the dosage received by trial participants. This comes after AstraZeneca announced on Monday that the vaccine is up to 90% effective in late-stage trials. Uh, joining us now, Professor Sir John Bell, who led and oversaw the vaccine's development at Oxford, and Andrew Lloyd Webber, legendary composer, and one of the participants in the vaccine trial. A very good afternoon to you both. A pleasure to have you both with us. I'm, I'm sorry there were some technical issues getting things fired up, but uh, good afternoon to you both. Right, good afternoon. Um, Hello, good afternoon. Pro Professor Sir John, I'll, I'll start mm -hmm. uh, with you, if, if I may. Um, we touched base on, on Monday and Tuesday when the news flow following your, your vaccine announce announcement was universally positive uh, based on its effectiveness, its relative cost. And, and since then, the tone has, has turned uh, a little bit in terms of uh, the reports, uh, as I just mentioned. H has it turned unfairly? Do you still see this as an overwhelmingly positive set of results? Yeah, so, I mean, there, there's always a problem in announcing scientific results by press release. And, and that is that, that you don't have all the data out there and people aren't able to really look and think about the data properly. So I think our position now is that we're in the process of getting a peer-reviewed publication out that will be able to lay out all the data so people can examine it and think about it carefully. And I'm sure the producers of the other vaccines are probably doing the same. And then we'll be in a much better position to know what we're doing. But, but ultimately, actually, to determine whether this is a safe and effective vaccine, it's going to be up to the regulators to do that. And again, we welcome the fact that they'll be able to look, cast an independent eye on what's going on. And, of course, uh, all of these trials rest on, on people volunteering to, to be a, a candidate in, in, the, in the vaccine trial. And, and uh, Andrew, you were one of those uh, people. Why did you put yourself forward in the first place? Well, as you probably know, I've been fighting to uh, get theatres reopened and, indeed, all forms of indoor music spaces uh, up and down not only just Britain, but all over America and the world, uh, based really on the information that I got very much earlier in the year, in fact, January, uh, to be precise, from South Korea, where um, live performances have continued all that time. And um, because I really tried to absolutely bang the drum for live entertainment, it seemed to me that the very least I could do, as I don't live that very far from Oxford, was to volunteer as an oldie uh, to, uh, to be see, see if I could be accepted onto the trial. And, and, and Andrew, uh, as, as your industry, uh, as you know it so well, for live theatre and live uh, musical performances, uh, how have governments, particularly the UK and the US, uh, responded? Have they been helpful or does the future of your industry rest on science and developments like this vaccine? Well, obviously, uh, it, it clearly does depend a great deal on uh, the development of the vaccine. But um, there have been a number of measures, a load of measures that uh, have been applied in, say, Korea and in, uh, in Japan, for example, um, which have mitigated the effect of the, uh, the virus enormously. And uh, it has been frustrating because um, one hits the health authorities all the time. Um, every time you come up with something new, you know, or, or something, you know, old that has been successfully trialed in other places, there's always some reason why you can't proceed with it. And um, I know it's actually frustrating government, actually, in Britain, too. Um, however, um, we are where we are. And um, I, I, I can only report that I, mean, I don't know whether I've actually had the real vaccine, because, of course, by the nature of the experiment, um, I, I wouldn't know. But uh, if, if I have, um, I haven't had any effects from it whatsoever other than feeling great. Pro Professor Sir John, uh, w whether the results suggest 90% uh, efficacy or, or the 60% e efficacy that we'll, we'll dive into in a moment, when is it realistic, do you think, that we'll be back to normal, going to, to live theatre and, and have herd immunity in countries like the UK and US? Well, I, I think the rollout of the vaccines is likely to happen pretty quickly after, uh, at the end of December, the beginning of January. And my, my expectation is the UK, which, of course, is a much smaller pool than the US, but we should be pretty substantially vaccinated, I would have thought, by spring, uh, maybe late spring, but certainly by spring. So I'm hoping we're going to get back to normal and be able to enjoy the theatre as we always did before. And I'm completely with Andrew that we need to work hard to try and get those things back in play. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.